Unfortunately, most of the time, it's gonna be most efficient to prep all of the veg, so cut up and clean all the vegetables that you need to do. Then you work on the meat. Once the meat is done, you add the vegetables. Once the vegetables are done, you add the quinoa and the water. So let's get started by first cutting up some vegetables. forgot to add two different vegetables to the mix and that is bok choy that I mentioned before and also green onions so I'm gonna cut those up now and add them to the bowl all right so now that we're done cutting up all the vegetables we're gonna move on to seasoning the meat before we start cooking it and usually when I season meat, all I do is throw in some salt and some pepper and that's it because personally I don't care, but I know a lot of people really enjoy seasoning and so I brought over my good friend Arslan, he's going to take care of the seasoning with the meat. Alright, so now we're going to start cooking in the pan. The first thing you're going to need to do is cook the meat. Once the meat is done till about, I'd say, 60-70%, I add on the vegetables so that while the vegetables are cooking, we don't overcook the meat. And then after that, we'll add on the quinoa. Place down some olive oil, and I usually put it to about a medium height, but we see how the cook is going on with time and we can adjust everything as we go along. All right, so now that the oil has warmed up a decent amount, I'm gonna add on the meat. And really what you wanna do is like leave it here for I'd say about seven to 10 minutes, something like that, mixing it about every now and again to make sure that it's even on all the different sides. I don't really do things based on time. Um, it's just sort of like gauging it as I go along. Here's the meat. We're gonna make sure that it's covered in a decent amount of oil. And as it heats up here, it's gonna start to cook quite nicely. And now we can do a time lapse of that. <laughs> So now if you guys take a look, you can see that the meat is at least 70% cooked, something like that. So it's almost there and because there's still all of this meat juice here, I want to use that to help flavor the vegetables as well. So I'm going to start adding all the veg in and this simply could not be any easier. I'm literally going to throw the vegetables down onto the food. I'm going to keep all these big leafy objects to the side. What you want to make sure is that you get the smaller vegetables down to the bottom so that they can cook and then leave the bigger vegetables up on top. And you might be thinking this looks like an absolute mess and how in the hell is this gonna turn into a decent meal? But a lot of this shrinks in size as you cook it and everything becomes a lot smaller, given a little bit of heat. So as you guys will see, this will become a lot more manageable in just a little bit of time. All right guys, so now all of the vegetable volume has gone down. Let's take this piece of carrot. That is hot. That is really hot. <laughs> I'm gonna wait a little bit more and then we'll add the quinoa. The vegetables cooked, the meat is cooked, and now what we're gonna do is add the grain. And so how I do this is also very, very easy. I literally just throw the couscous or the quinoa or the rice, whatever it is you're cooking with this meal, on top of the food. And I'm gonna use two packets because I wanna make a lot of food for last throughout the week. And now you just add a bunch of boiled water. And you want to add a decent amount of water. You might have to add water again if the quinoa is not fully cooked and it's reaching the point where the water is disappearing. But basically, that's it. You leave this on a light simmer. So you don't want to see that the water is boiling very strongly. You want to just have it bubbling a little bit. So the meal, a little bit less of a boil than that. But anyway, it's just going to stay like that for about now 10, 15 minutes and the meal will be finished. So we'll catch up then. All right, so now that the food's done cooking, we can do what is basically the easiest and best part, which is package it into different Tupperwares that you can easily have throughout the week. So a meal like this would usually take me about an hour to cook. That might sound like I'm exaggerating or something, but honestly, not at all. I just put on a YouTube video to watch in the background, and I just burst through this, cutting up everything really quickly, putting everything on the stove, and it can honestly be done in an hour. All right, so Arslan is gonna have the official taste test now. He's gonna let you guys know if this food is actually good or if I'm just chatting this whole time and I don't know what I'm doing. And yeah, let's see what it tastes like. 
Give your honest opinion. Like off camera? <laughs> <laughs> very average. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's actually pretty good. And so. it's very nutrient dense, which is what you need as a student. It has a lot of protein too. And it's healthy, etc. etc. So yeah.